Football season's here and I've been waiting all year Head high, no looking back No fear, here we go Bright House Network's High School Football Game of the Week. Sponsored by Premier Equipment Rentals, Audio Visual Plus, KGET Friday Football Extra, Crab Radio 106.1 FM, and Fox Sports 970 AM. Well, a very, very good evening, Kern County. Welcome back to Bright House Network's High School Football Game of the Week. It's the only place you can watch an entire high school football game in its entirety, and it's exclusively with Bright House Networks. Well, it's Friday night. Obviously, we are at Bakersfield High School, the fabled, legendary, mythical football field. And uh, my name is Vance Palm, joined by Matt Alvarez, and down on the grass is Brian Adams, the Liberty Patriots, with a huge, and we can't overstate it, a Huge upset last Friday night over Centennial Golden Hawks. Puts them in a situation tonight where not only are they playing the BHS Drillers for the last league game, they're playing for a share of the league title. Let's go down on the grass to a person who has spent lots and lots of time on this field racking up Valley Championships. The Driller, Brian Adams. Here they come, the Big Blue, Brian. Well, Vance, they're coming out tonight. You know, they definitely want to get their chance to take part of this championship and, and share the league championship with Centennial Liberty. But they're going to have to share some things. We saw them last two weeks ago against Centennial. There were some mistakes in the defensive backfield. Now, Liberty doesn't pass the ball as much, Vance. However, they were opportunistic last week when we watched them against Centennial. And if they can catch some mix-ups and get some big plays, I'm sure the coaching staff looked at that film work to see if the drillers have shored up that backfield. Thank you, Brian Adams, a driller and a UCLA Bruin, and our 13-year veteran. Let's come back up to the Premier Equipment Scissor List, my partner, Matt Alvarez. Matt, you're a Foothill High Trojan, product of the University of Arizona. A big game for your catch tomorrow night against the Trojans. So we're getting you in the mood tonight. What about this Liberty squad who's coming off the biggest victory in I wouldn't say their entire history of their school, but an awfully big one. It's, it's up there, Vance, for sure. And you know, Carson Moyer, when you talk about Liberty, you talk about Carson Moyer. This kid's just a stud. He's rushed for 1,628 yards, leading the Valley right now in terms of rushing yards, 17 touchdowns. Like Brian says, they don't throw it a lot, but why do you need to when you can go to Carson Moyer and he can bust it up the gut every play? The leading rusher in the area against a very tough defense in BHS. Liberty is going to be receiving uh, the kickoff. And we finally have some football weather. <laughs> Last week we were still in our polos and now we're finally into the nippy, breezy, cool, chilly November air. It is November 12, 2010 and this is the league championship game, a share of it between the home school of the Bakersfield High School Drillers, the most successful high school program in the state of California history against the Liberty Patriots, very successful school in their right. And tonight, let's see who carries the momentum into a league title or a share of it. Here we go. Again, Bright House Network's High School Football Game of the Week. What a pleasure to have you with us tonight for this very important game. BHS crowd starting to get filled up over there on the cement stands and the Liberty crowd below us, as you can hear, ready to go. Here comes the kickoff. It's underway and it is caught at the five yard line, and it's Henry Cordova. Cordova with a ton of room. Cordova at the 35, at the 40. Hank Cordova goes down to the 41 yard line, and that is exactly how Liberty had hoped to start their first possession near midfield. Well, Cordova fielded that ball, and you know, if you saw it, he jumped up in the air. He misjudged the uh, trajectory of that ball, but he was able to get it up to the 40 yard line, got this crowd a little bit pumped up. Now it's up to Cody Renz and the Liberty offense. Let's see if they can keep that momentum going from last week, Vance, because like Centennial, after beating BHS, you see there on the uh, AV Plus Instant Replay, the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay, but they wave off the flag there, as you might have seen a flag thrown on the far side of the field. But you remember how Centennial, after they beat BHS, Centennial had a little bit of a letdown the week after in playing Liberty. Let's see if Liberty has that same letdown playing BHS tonight. We pulled out of that uh, replay. We wanted to make sure we had the... Uh the call, but there is no call. First and 10, 
Liberty at BHS 40 yard line. They go straight to the main man, Moyer. He pounds his way for five yards. And Brian, we saw this a lot last week. First and 10, turned into second and five. First and 10, turned into second and four. First and 10, turned into second and six. Well, you're exactly right, Vance. And one of the things that he'll do is he's patient. And they keep pounding, pounding him. And eventually, like he's done in the two games we've seen this year, he will break a big one. Just underway. We have just started this football game, Liberty. Received the kickoff. This is their second play from the line of scrimmage at the second and five from the 40 yard line. Hard count by Renz, nobody goes. They hand the ball up the middle and we're in a peculiar place here. The visiting side's loudspeakers are right in the, our, at least in my sight, my line of sight. Uh, it was Corbin Jounty uh, running that ball, Vance. And you know, that he's their second option, but usually they'll get him going through the air for the <laughs> most part. Cowboy Mark Wilson. He knows how to find our cameras. We caught him yesterday in the Veterans Day Parade. He was his own float. Third and one at the 50. I formation, and they're gonna give it to Moyer. Moyer looks for a hole. He finds it, and he's still on his feet. First down, he delivers the punishment, and Gabriel Cardenas stopped him, but took a hit. Yeah, he did. Cardenas was in good position, but Moyer, when he lowers that shoulder, he's hard to stop, Vance. And that's one thing you, you mentioned to Brian just a few minutes ago, as you see here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay. Look at Cody Temple in there, number 75. Putting a big block. You see the blockers downfield for Liberty. And you know, it's, let's see, uh, do we have a stoppage in play here? It's an official's timeout. Looks like BHS having a problem with one of their equipment and their helmet. But uh, you just talked about to Brian Adams about how Liberty is able to get a first and five. And you see Cody Temple. Where's he going next year? University of Southern California. He verbaled this week, didn't he? Matt Alvarez. He verbaled this week. Matt Alvarez. Carson Moyer. Boom, hit hard and thrown back for a quick loss. And the first grab up there was Kenneth Kruba. Kruba grabbed him and threw him back for a quick loss. Well, maybe not a loss, but big tackle. Well, Truba grabbed him, but that was definitely David Williams who laid the pop on him as it was a bit of a double team tackle. You see here on the audio visual plus instant replay, the handoff to Moyer. Truba grabs him, boom. That's just a big form hit. And he gets a little uh, dirt in his face by Corbin Jounty, but nonetheless, that's a big stop for BHS to limit Moyer to only one yard on first down, Vance. Second and nine, 45-yard line of BHS. They go back to Moyer. Moyer, now he's patient, stays behind his line, gets up to the 41-yard line. And as you can expect, there's going to be a lot of verbal jabbing back and forth in this football game. The drillers, the storied football game of our state, and the Liberty Patriots who come off a monumental win over the Centennial Golden Hawks last week and it was a game that is still being talked about. We had a blast calling it and I uh, heard a lot about that. A lot of texts, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails talking about that. Third and five, double receivers out to the left. Renz rolls to his left. He's in hot pursuit, sees his man, makes connection and he's brought down to the 36 yard line. It's gonna be caught out there by Preston Johnson. Looks like it might be a first down. Well, good job by Johnson to find an opening in the flats and Renz, great job by him to find Johnson, and that's going to be a first down there. So Liberty moving this ball like clockwork. You see there in the Audio Visual Plus instant replay. Good hard ball thrown there to Johnson. 6'1", 215-pound senior. Makes no mistake. You know, Brian, this is a really good sign for the Liberty Patriots to be able to get into a rhythm and be composed and not get too amped up here early. That's exactly right, Vance. And obviously the drillers didn't watch our telecast last week about containment. These ends, you have to be worried about that. Now they go to Moyer. He just burls his way up to the 25-yard line. Brian, another thing I heard quite a bit about was our new Sesame Street version of the word for that week was containment. And then I watched it on Sunday in the NFL. I watched it Monday night in the NFL. Containment was a theme all week. Well, you know, Vance, you have to really be worried when you play Liberty because they're going to do that play action. They're going to just roll them out. So those ends have to stay at home and be able to force Renz to come back into the pocket. Great throwing opportunity. Huff out to the right side. I formation. Moyer keeps it. Moyer bangs his way up for a first down. Now he has five drillers trying to bring him down. Still on his feet. Gets another eight yards after being stood up by three or four drillers. Well, that's just persistence right there by the Liberty offensive line and by Carson Moyer. And at the end of that play, you saw big Cody Temple just run up into that pile and move it another four or five yards here, as you see on the AV Plus Insta replay. Renz to Moyer, and then he gets some great blocking there by Jounty. Good seal block there by the fullback on that play. And then when Moyer gets his head down, and you see Cody Temple just moves the pile right here. Look, he 
kind of taking his time right now. Dun, 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 Temple already doing it. High formation, hard count by Renz, nobody goes. Oh, hit in the backfield, fumble! Driller football. Well, that was a problem. That was a problem that haunted Liberty last week against Centennial. As you heard us mention many times if you tuned in last week that Liberty was doing everything, everything they possibly could to not pull the upset. Obviously, tonight wouldn't be any sort of upset because you know BHS is ready for these guys, but they've got to hold on to that ball. 7.40 remaining in this first quarter, and the Drillers were on their heels, but they come up with a big defensive play and a turnover by the Patriots. Look at this. First and 10 Drillers and the quarterback, Brian Burrell. 7.40 remaining, and the first play from the line of scrimmage is going to be Burrell. He's going to keep it himself. Burrell, ton of room, gets up to the 36-yard line. First down on his first carry. Well, they run the triple option to the right side, and Burrell gets a good downfield block by Max Heflin, big 6'5", 275-pound offensive lineman. You see here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay, they fake the handoff up the middle, but you see number 75 right here coming into your screen. Or check that, number 52, Heflin, the downfield lead blocker. Look at that, that's a great block right there. Burrell, mini shotgun. Liberty, four up front. It's a handoff, goes right at the middle. They get maybe one or two yards. So if you're just getting to your television, if you're just getting home, you're just turning this on, the Liberty Patriots took the kickoff at the five-yard line, and Hank Cordova brought it up to the 40, and the Patriots just pounded it down to the 24-yard line where they fumbled the ball, and now the Drillers have it on their first possession. Under seven minutes remaining in this first quarter, second and six for BHS. A couple of wide receivers out here to the left side. Bottom of your screen, out of your vision. Burrell looks to his left side, tosses it out. And this time it's going to be caught out there by Johnson. Brandon Johnson brought down at about the 45-yard line. Nice play, good rhythm. You know, Burrell, Brian, is one of these multifaceted quarterbacks. You always have to be aware of what he can do on the run and with his arm, hoping for a big night tonight. Well, you know, Vance, one of the things that you want to see him if you're a Driller fan is you want to see him be very accurate when he is throwing the ball because that's going to be one of the keys to their run at the section title. And it's going to be a key tonight. Can they pass the ball effectively and efficiently when they need to? Big third and two at the 45-yard line. Burrell, option, pitches, looks like they might have the first and more. Perfect block upfield at the 40 and the 35-yard line. Whoa, some great downfield blocking. And that's a nice run out there by David Price. Well, it was Richard Van Horn who had the block on the right side. Boy, Richard Van Horn, that name sounds familiar, doesn't it, Vance? Ricky, don't lose that number, Van Horn. Well, a great block out on the right side, and that's what you want to do if you're a receiver. You know, you could be the last line in terms of blockers that your running back has. It's a first down for the Drillers. Under six in this first quarter. Time flying by. In motion is wide. Here's the handoff right at the side. There it is. Nasida. Touchdown, Driller. Pow. There's the first punch. Big play, Driller. Silas Nasida. He's been doing it all season for the for the Drillers. 13 touchdowns, 14 now on the season. He came into this game with 606 yards. He tacks on about 45 more on that play. You see here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay, Woo. just a simple handoff. They run that triple option again. And once Nasida gets to the outside, there's no catching him. Wow, here's the PAT with 5.42 remaining in the first quarter. Parker Campbell, the snap, the hold, the kick, and it's up and it looks good, so 7-0. Big event tonight, you know it's a big game if Bo Redstone is in the house, the former driller great, great football player, legendary basketball player. You know that if the great one is here, it's a big event. <laughs> well, BHS able to capitalize on a Liberty turnover. And there you go, Vance. Look at the great one, Ryan Redstone. The great one. <laughs> You're right, Matt. I mean, boom. Turnover, touchdown. And 
for Liberty, you know, that takes a wind out of their first quarter momentum here. They came off that big centennial win, and they were marching the football down the field. A turnover just like that. And now, Brian, we get to see what they're all about because uh, they've been on a seven-day high. Well, you know, Vance, that's one of the things you guys talked about earlier. I heard you mention is when you come off those big wins, you know, can you get back up the next week? And those are some of the things in this league this year that's been different from the past. There has been only been only been one night when you could take a breath. Every other night you had to be ready to play in this league. And it showed as we have a, two, a team tonight trying to win to get a three-way tie and one team trying to get a two-way tie and win and win to the tie break. It's going to be taken at the five-yard line. And it's taken by Jonty. Jonty with some more room. Jonty trying to get upfield. Jonty makes a nice move. He's hit hard. It's a fumble. I think Parker Campbell got it. I think the kicker got it, Vance. The, staff, the coach, coaching staff for Liberty says their ball. BHS saying their ball. You can see that hit coming. BHS football. Well, when you dance like that on a kickoff return, Vance, with all that speed, all those heads flying so fast, you see Jounty coming here. He's, he's, he's got the ball secured, but you see when you start dancing like this and going east-west instead of north-south. And we saw it coming. Oh, Pow. what a hit. Huge hit by Williams. And I think Griffith, or check that, Parker Campbell, I think the kicker came up with the ball. I mean, that's, that's early Christmas present right there, Vance. That's a nice stat for a kicker, eh? Absolutely. Liberty better become the Scrooges on defense. This can get out of control real quick, fellas. They're going to have to. Burrell, they go right up the middle. He's brought down after about a three-yard gain. The runner on that is Nasita. And, uh, oh, my goodness. So how quickly the tide turns here. Goodness. With 5.08 left in this first quarter, now the BHS drillers are starting to really make some noise. Well, two turnovers already here in the first eight minutes of this one, Vance. Seven and a half minutes of this one. That's just something very uncharacteristic of this Liberty offense. Burrell goes to the corner. A man wide open. Oh, my goodness. He overthrows Richard Van Horn, and he was absolutely alone. I mean, the closest Patriot to him was Darren Ajie and... I mean, he wasn't even close. B, what'd you see down there? Vance, that's what you wanted. Right there, we talked about it. The drillers have to be an efficient passing team. And I'm not talking about this for tonight. Tonight, you know, that's of course to win the night, but also to do what they really want to accomplish the section title. They have to be efficient. And those little things right there, those little misses, could be big for them. Wow. Now it's third and four. Fortunately for the Patriots. And the seat is out to the right side. Burrell stops, has his man. Oh, and he tried to play it off. As, like, as he was going to Nasidas, but it got bundled up there on the 30-yard line. A couple of drillers receivers bumping into each other, but Burrell really starting to look awfully confident back there. Yeah, he is, and he's getting a lot of time from his line. You see here he designed rollout, and then he pumps to try to get those guys open down the middle. And he had, you know, two guys downfield. It's, you know, one of them was Brandon Johnson. If Johnson would have released and kept going, it was a touchdown. Yeah, absolutely, but Liberty dodges a bullet here for the time being. Well, they show punt. But you never know. The Patriots aren't buying. Nasita's standing at his own 45. Nobody deep for the Patriots. And sure enough, oh, boy, he thought I thought he was going to take it. But he runs with it and punts it. Nice job by Silas Nasita. And uh, looked at it for a minute. They decided to go ahead and put it on his foot. And right at the 10-yard line, it'll be first and 10 Liberty. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Premier Equipment Rentals, for giving us these great scissor lifts all season long. Give us these incredible vantage points. And of course, Audiovisual Plus replay for all your Audiovisual Plus needs, including the podium. And then, of course, the three media sponsors that jumped on board with us this year and that have reaped the benefits of being attached to the number one on demand show we have. That, of course, is Crab Radio. We'll have our Crab Crush tonight and Fox Sports Radio 970. And then. The Prime Minister himself, Todd Strain, KGET Friday Football Extra. I'll tell you a funny story about Todd Strain calling me last Saturday as we were on our way down to our Renegade game. First and 10, they go right to Moyer, no messing around. They try to pound out a few yards. About a three yard gain there. I was on my way down to Cerritos last Saturday night with the Renegade Radio crew team of Kirk Boyer and Tim Wheeler. My phone rings and it's Todd Strain. 
to advance. I'd like to quote you from my Sunday night edition about your thoughts on that Liberty ending against Centennial. Was it, would you consider that one of the top five finishes in Kern County football? Took about a half a second to think about it and I said, absolutely, Todd, you can quote me. The importance of the game, the rankings, Cody Kessler, all the hype. So late in the season, I ranked it one of the top five finishes in high school football. Third and seven. Option. Renz keeps, battles, fumble! And it's picked up by Moyer. <laughs> Can't go with it, but I think it's going to be a first down Liberty. Well, it's awfully close, but boy, oh boy. Uh, you know, we've talked about it a couple times this year. That was a strip. Yeah, that was a strip, but we've talked about it a couple times this year that you know, maybe some of these guys just need some stick them on, uh, on their hands with the football because... Well, they're going to have to measure this unless they've got... Yeah, they're going to bring it out. I believe they're going to bring them out. Well, you see the strip there being made by Nasita. You know, he already has a touchdown tonight, so he's well aware that this game, that they could put the, put this game away here All pretty right. early if Liberty keeps fumbling it. Chain gang's walking out, jogging out, whatever you call it. Well, Brian, they certainly watched enough game film to realize that the Patriots had slippery hands because they've been going at it as we see the first down by sheer luck. You know, Vance, I mean, one of the things is you got to remember, this is the driller's strength defensively is against the run. This is what they do best. Right. If you look at the two losses, the losses came against teams that were able to really pass the ball well on them. It's not against teams that are going to try to pound it. But if Moyer's a different type of back, like I said, he gets two yards, five yards, maybe three, but eventually he'll, he busts, he seems to be able to bust a big one. That's a great point, Brian. Great point. BHS called a timeout before the snap, so it is a first and 10, and it's 316 remaining in this first quarter. Matt, I'll tell, I'll tell you about this. Yeah, I'll tell you about this uh, Liberty offense while we get the chance. Well, you already know about Carson Moore. You know about Cody Renz, the guy who made the incredible east and west run yesterday. He ran about 75 yards before he hurled the game-winning touchdown pass to Moyer, you know, wide open. And you've got Corbin Jounty. Of course, on defense, we haven't we've seen a lot of uh, Liberty's defense thus far, but Mason Otten, their senior, has 100 total tackles on the season. Man. Not playing tonight, Mason Otten. Is he on the sidelines over there? Is that who on I see? On the sidelines. Well, that's yeah. a big loss for the defense then. Saw him Sunday in church, and I he had came walking down the aisle in his crutches. And you talk about a young man that wanted to be playing tonight. He is uh, <laughs> a warrior. I know Brian likes Mason Notton and his nonstop motor and uh, missing out with Mason. He's down there. got the boot on the foot. And he did walk out as a captain tonight for the Free game officiousness. Here we go. First and ten after the timeout. 316 remaining here in this first quarter. What a football game is starting. Renz wants to go to the air. Has a nice pocket, nice time. Throws it up. Has a man wide open. And oh my goodness, if he doesn't overthrow him, Kenny Davis goes for six. So there's another huge gaff by the defensive backfield. Man, he there was nobody near him. Yeah, I think the defender fell down on the play on the left side, but you see Renz. He had plenty of time. You know, he's, he's going to have plenty of time now if he wants to draw back and throw because he has those big offensive linemen, especially USC-bound Cody Temple. But you see just a ball just a little overthrown there, tended for the sophomore Davis, who we've seen a lot of this sure year. He can, he can make plays, that's for sure. Second and 10. 7 nothing. Drillers lead. They scored on their first possession. Now Renz with the I formation. They go up the middle. No, now it's junk. He wants to get to the outside. Can't do it. Nice job. Hey, containment, baby, containment. There's your containment. Well, when, when, and when they're running, you cannot run east and west against this team right here. They're too fast, sideline to sideline. I think the best bet if you are going to run is to hit up the middle. Their best runs tonight have been up the middle. Unfortunately, like you guys have said, their, their inability to hold on the ball consistently has been a problem. And, you know, you, you got to figure right now, third and seven, you're deep in your territory. They're going to do something short, I believe, some kind of rollout. Or again, they might just play it safe and get the ball to Moyer and see what he can do. Third and seven. Now Junte's off just to the right a little bit. No eye formation. Renz runs to his right. He's in trouble. Renz is running for it. He's running to the sideline. Renz, and it's going to be a holding. And it was right in front of the official. Yeah, he head referee Derek Griffith there. That one, uh, 
You could definitely see that from a mile away. I didn't get yep. the number on who was holding. Well, <laughs> Renz was on the run early in this play. I think it might have been a designed rollout, but BHS's defensive line read it well. Derek Griffith right, right there, of course. Uh, BHS going to decline it. Griffith Vance is the referee who was the lead official for our alumni game up in Taft a couple weeks ago. Easily recognizable with the... Uh, with hairdo like that. With the they, they had real officials in there? I thought you just called, them, you just called on yourself. Ah. We were on the honor system, Brian. You Griffith know. has business in the front, party in the back. Got some hair flying back there. So they're going to have to punt the football. Caden Meadows back to punt. Oh, that's Angel Mariscal. Right, right, right. He had a great week last he week. sure morning. did. How can I miss... How can I miss that one? Perfect deep snap. And he gets off another nice angled punt. And it takes a wild bounce, and this driller wants to run it. <laughs> he finally gets away from it, starts backing up. 38-yard line, first and 10 BHS drillers. Where will we be next week? We have no idea yet because the playoffs will be announced <clears throat> tomorrow. A programming note, I won't be here. Matt Alvarez will be handling play-by-play. -play. Brian Adams, his usual stellar self. Two-man crew next week. I have the honor of emceeing and hosting the retirement dinner for the only athletic director in CSUB's history, Rudy Carvajal. So I'll be handling that, and Matt and Brian will be handling football, and then I'll be back in two weeks for the second week of playoff football. 207, Burrell starts his offense at the 38 yard line. Option pitch out to the left side. Craziness. Johnson hit hard and brought down the 40-yard line. And Liberty's got an injured player there at about the 43-yard oh, line. that was Hannibal, line. sorry. Well, Hannibal, you know, he, he stepped back to the wrong side of the field like he was going to cut back in as we have a timeout here, but watch this hit at the end of the play. Boom. Whoa. That's a contender for the crab crush right there But early. don't announce it yet, fellas. Don't announce it in the first quarter. And we have an injured player on the field for Liberty, but Rudy Carbajal, Vance, you were talking about, he's... The only CSUB, or the only athletic director in CSUB's history, you know, uh, the soccer team actually won today. They're getting the championship game of the MPSF, and if they win, they're going to get an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. That'll be Rudy's. Wow. That'll be Rudy's first ever team sport, getting an NCAA Division One bid in the uh, postseason tournament. Wrestling's not the wrestling. Not a team not sport. Individual. Oh, team sport. Right, 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 right. Well, Rudy was my AD. Bo Redstone's AD. Close personal friend, and we're happy to see. Wow, that's one tough customer right there. That's Kent, uh, That's um, Dre Golston that hops up, and he's used to contact, so good to see him up and walking off the sidelines. So a second and seven officially, 151 remaining in the first. As we see Cody Temple and company line up in that defensive front. You imagine he and Kessler on the same team next year, fun. Wise goes in motion. He's going to catch it from Burrell. He's out to the 45, to the 50. He cuts back up, and he's thrown out of bounds at about the 49-yard line. Nice play, really nice play. Yeah, that's a good gain. Looks like they're going to get another first down here near midfield of the Drillers. Up 7-0 here with a minute 33 left to go in the first quarter. And it's going to be a big first down here because it's going to put him over on the Liberty side of the field. Nice autumn evening. It feels like football. Beautiful. Wise goes in motion again. This time they go right up the middle. Burrell fakes it and goes to the right. Well, that triple option, that that throws everybody off, Vance. And, you know, Burrell, they, they run it so well, they already scored a touchdown, the only touchdown of the game on a triple option play. And Burrell decided to keep it himself. You know, and then on that play to Hannibal a couple plays ago where uh, Golston was injured, that was a long pitch that yeah, Burrell almost, threw. Almost that's, a hair behind him. that's dangerous right there. You don't want to. You have too many of those during the game. Van Horn in the slot, man to man, way out on the left side, and in motion is going to be Hannibal. They see Van Horn. Boy, it's a nice play. A really nice play. Just isn't, wasn't executed well. Called it perfectly. Hannibal pulls everybody to the left and, I mean, to the right. And doggone it, there's Van Horn wide open. Now that's a well designed play because when you have that man in motion, like you said, Vance, it brings the attention of the defense to the man in motion, and they all start swarming to the right. And then you have Van Horn going up into the slot area, up into the slant area 
And he was wide open, yeah. but that pass just behind him a little bit. Burrell's upset with himself because he knows that was a big first down. Third and six now. Now Van Horn, wide receiver way out to the left. They're going to do it again with Hannibal. And a big hit at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing there, and the seat is thrown down. The Liberty crowd loves it. Well, guess who, Vance? Cody Temple. Cody Temple got in there and made the initial contact. Going to bring up a fourth down here with just about 40 seconds left to go in the first. They're going to force VHS into another punting situation. You see here AV plus instant replay. Cody Temple, oh, he's just overmatching his opponents. I mean, that's just a big, big dude. <laughs> You're right about that. Deep for the Patriots. Kenny Davis stands at his 15. Nasita puts one up, and Kenny Davis can have a good opportunity to grab it and run. Oh, hit hard, though. And he's still got some room. Can he get outside? He's brought down the 26-yard line. Well, Brian, as we go to break, take us to break with your thoughts on this first quarter. Well, Vince, I think Liberty Patriots have done a great job, have not given up any more than seven points to keep themselves in the game. It's almost the same feeling we had last week, guys. They just keep hanging around and hanging around, and you can't put them away. And then if you give these guys a chance, they're believers, and believers are hard to beat, Vance, in the end of the game. You're right, Brian, with, with another great, poignant, salient thought from you, the fact that, hey, this thing could have been 14, maybe 21 nothing, with fumbles. First play of the first of the last play of the first quarter. And that's going to do it. 7 nothing. BHS up. You're watching Bright House Network's high school football game of the week. We will be back right after this for the second quarter. Drillers up by a TD. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970. With Dan Patrick in the morning. And Jim Rome, 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports. It's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. back everybody the start of the second quarter the public address announcer was just announcing uh, BHS girls volleyball at Centennial next week wow it just gets bigger and bigger as the uh, the month of November starts to unfold and as we see here at the beginning of the second quarter it's gonna be a first down Liberty those girls are stoked man <laughs> Oh, well, they're not cold, that's for sure. They're having a good time down there on the sidelines. And, you know, Liberty sideline finally able to celebrate something. They get a first down here as we come back into the second quarter. Well, Matt, they played so well the first three or four minutes of that first drive of theirs, and then it's just been all BHS on offense. So I think another sustained, methodical, plotting drive that we saw last week will do them well. First and ten. Wren's on his own. Well, I sure like that call. We saw a lot of Wren's uh, last week showing off his legs, and I think it's a smart call. Yeah, you know, because Wren's has the agility. He has the mobility to be a running quarterback, you know, but then, like we saw, he can also throw the ball. Wren asked to do so, but you see Wren's right here, just that fake handoff to Carson Moyer, who then becomes his lead blocker, and then that's all the evasiveness there by Cody Wren's. Finally wrapped up by wow. Williams there, but Broke picked four up. tackles. Yeah, picked up six yards. Not bad when your quarterback breaks four tackles. With all due respect, he is a cornerback as well, so he's used to making a little contact. You're right. Second and four, so a nice six-yard gain to start it off. He's going to go to the air. He runs to his left, throws across his body, decides, nope, got to pull it in. And he's brought down the 50-yard line. A beautiful open field tackle out there by David Williams. 
Well, you know, Williams is on Renz again. I think they may have Renz keyed now with Williams, as you see Corbin Jounty right there, but the play action fake, and then Renz rolls out to the left side, fakes like he's going to throw, but, you know, Williams, it's I think it's his duty now. I think they, they're going to key Williams on Renz now, and regardless of whether or not Renz throws that ball, Williams is going to be on him. Well, some nice speed by Williams, Brian. Oh, yes, it is. And, you know, he really roams the field well, so I think he's somebody that Liberty definitely needs to get a, a body on. They go back to Moyer now. Moyer makes one cut. That's all he needs to give himself some more space. He's at the 35, and it just always, it's like just that one big, huge grouping the moment he gets the football. The drillers can't bring him down, and then the Patriot linemen come in to help him. It's just like a big hangout every time he has the ball. There's head coach Paul Gola for the drillers. Yeah, they need their chips and drinks, and you'll have a full-fledged party there, Vance, but nine and a half left to go here in the second quarter. You see the AV plus instant replay. Moyer straight up the middle. Well, he has to break a tackle there as a, somebody missed their block there on the offensive line, but yeah, like you said, there's just every time he gets the ball, it's like a party. Second and three, eye formation. Renz has the ball deflected, it goes backwards, and it's gonna be picked up at about the 41 yard line out there. Wow, what a funky play that was, and swallowed up and taken down by Kenny Davis, but it was deflected as the bass was gonna be going backwards. Yeah, what a heads up play there by Davis to understand that that's a live ball. As you see Renz, you know, he was gonna throw that ball backwards anyway. I think if he right. throws the ball forwards and it gets deflected backwards, right. it's an incomplete pass. So that's great awareness there by Kenny Davis to know to jump on that ball and tried to make something happen. Now he's coming off the field with a bit of a gimp on the Boy, that's a line. big play by the BHS defense. Big play right there. Just as Liberty's starting to get a little momentum, that defense makes a big play. You know, again, Vance, like I said, running the ball against the drillers, you, you can have some success. You're not going to have long-term success against them. This is what, what Goal has done since his career, since he's been as a coach here. That, like the delay of the game type kind of call, fellas, right there. Well, it looks like a timeout. And it's going to be called by the Patriots. So uh, and they called it just in time. Yeah, man. they did. <laughs> so of course, high schools don't have the luxury of having the play clocks posted in the end zones. But well, give us an opportunity to kind of look back on this year. We started off with Centennial playing a school from the Valley, from up north, and just a, a, a glimpse of what we were going to see of Cody Kessler and company. And then we pretty much had every school. Maybe one or two didn't get some time this year, but we spread the wealth as far as Bright House Network's concerned. Any other players or games or plays or events pop out to you, Brian? Well, you know, I, I think obviously last week's game has to be one of the best games, but I think I still think that uh, Garces, San Joaquin Memorial what a game, game, in terms of two running backs just going at it and put on a show, uh, Chris Brown and Jalen Sykes probably had the best two games that two backs could have in one game, and then you had the uh, general filling in with some with some big plays himself so that was a great game I thought went down to the wire so we've had some great opportunity great moments this year the Holy Bowl with Grant Campbell and Sykes and Chris Brown and company as we hear an early score 14 nothing centennial over frontier I'll get Matt's thoughts and some games and some thoughts and some events from the season here as the game unfolds third and 12 wrench drops back has time throws one out to the near side and it's going to be caught what a pass Hung up there forever, and it was caught by Jacob Graff. But goodness, that ball hung up for a long time, Matt. And you know, I, I think that was planned, Vance, because Graff, 6 1, he had a little bit of a height advantage, but nonetheless, that ball did hang up there for a while. But Graff did a good job. Came of, from the far side of the field. Yeah, he did a great job, though, of establishing positioning in front of the cornerback. <laughs> Look at that thing. That thing is just hanging up there like a punt. And Graff. Good job of pulling it in and a first down, Vance. You know, you said that was a big third down for BHS, and that was also a big third down for Liberty. Moyer busts through. He's got that momentum now. It's like every time a big play takes place, Moyer, will just, Moyer he just reloads and gets the engines going. He is one tough customer. They're right below us now. I mean, that football is directly below us. We're, I'm sitting at about the on a chair at about the 24-yard line, and that ball is going to be marked at the 24-yard line. So from our perspective, we are right on top of it. Got a good shot at how tough Moyer is. Here he comes, Matt. Uh, you see Moyer on the AV plus instant replay, low wow. in the shoulder right there. But, man, Williams. Williams has been all over the field tonight for BHS's defense, and he's doing a great job throwing Moyer out of bounds, limiting him to a three-yard gain. It's going to be second and seven. So the two seniors going at it. 
Now we see Davis being told by Renz to get over to the right side. They fake to Moyer. Renz has some time. Looks across his body. Now he takes a look. He's just going to throw it out of bounds and uh, gets rid of it. So great coverage out there by the drillers. Nice job defense, BHS. Well, that was a great job defensively. And this time they had two guys on Cody Renz. So Cody Renz didn't want to take the ball, tuck it, and run. He had to get rid of it. He threw it out of bounds. Smart play there by Renz to bring up a third and seven. You know, I saw Preston Johnson kind of peeling back over here like that last touchdown play from last week. He was starting to sneak back over towards Brian, but uh, the drillers at the last minute, one of the defenders said, no, 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 no. We saw that last week. Everybody saw that last week. Third and seven, ball again at 24 yard line. Lone back is Moyer, right behind Renz. Quick snap, they give it to Moyer. Moyer busts to the middle, but this time he's gonna be held up. And it's the singular effort of Dominic Rutherford that stopped that from being a first down. Well, that's wow. a great play by Rutherford because if Moyer had broken that tackle, that would have been a first down for sure. They're gonna bring out the kicking unit here with Garcia. But you see the AV plus instant replay. Rutherford sheds his block. And then it's just all him and Moyer. Ooh, I had a little trouble holding on to the ball, but. And Moyer comes off the field really just somber. He is not, well, he's heated, actually. He does not like being stopped by one guy. Here comes a, what is it? 38. 38 yarder. Garcia. The snap, the hold, the kick. It is up and it is no good wide right. Wow. Well, tough break there. That was Liberty's chance to put some points on the board. Usually reliable kicker there in Eric Garcia, but BHS going to dodge another bullet. Already with a 7-0 lead taken over at the 20-yard line. Here's a look at it, Matt. What do you see? Anything? Now the laces were in. Laces were in, Vance. All right, first and 10, Burrell. Hands the ball off, goes right up the middle. Please get us a replay. I got to hear this one. All right, let's go. I've got to let's, hear this. Let's hear this kick right here. I thought he just pushed it out to the right and never had a chance of going in. Well, it definitely doesn't help when the laces are facing the kicker, that's for sure. But, you know, yeah, Garcia obviously pushed it. You see, watch, watch the laces right there, facing back towards the kicker. That's something that you can never do as a holder. But nonetheless, Garcia, well, he pushed that pretty bad as it yeah. is. It's right up the middle at the 30-yard line. Masita brought down and very close to the first down. Cowboy Mark, give it to him. Cowboy Mark, give it to him. <laughs> Cowboy Mark saw me yesterday at the pre-parade show that we did. And I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm in the parade, man. So I thought he might be on a float or he might be a part of a big production. Cowboy Mark was an entry on his bike. Was it a good bike? Was it a good, good little it. Harley? No, no, bicycle. Oh, bicycle. Yeah, wow. Bicycle. All right, third and one. Looked like some motion early, but no dice. Nasita at the 40, at the 50. Nasita get brought, gets brought down the 43-yard line. Got away with some movement before the snap. Yeah, it looked like Nasita was leaning forward a little bit just as that snap was given to Burrell, but nonetheless, not called. No yep. harm, no foul. Big first down. Absolutely, 43 yard line now. They're on Liberty's side of the field with 4.56 left to go here in the second. Bobby Mark at the 43 yard line. Under five remaining in this first half. This game's been swimming by pretty quickly. Seven to nothing, the drillers lead by a touchdown. They're looking for a share of the league title. Burrell, flushed out of the pocket. Nifty, nimble runner. Overthrows Wise. And Wise was wide open, but Burrell is just hard to bring down. He is very, very sure-footed. Yeah, Wise, if he would have gotten Wise there, though, you know, if Wise wasn't 5'4", maybe he was about 5'7", he could have been pulling that down, taking it to at least the 20-yard line. But you see here Burrell able to escape, very maneuverable, but then Wise just out of his fingertips. Brings up second and 10. Nasita's back there with him. Hannibal over to his right. Van Horn and Cardenas out to the left. Nasidis 
gets the carry. A lot of contact right up to the middle of the football field. Some big hitting going on. You know, it looks like they got away with some more movement on the line. Vance's Nasita looks like he's uh, yeah. getting off the gun a little early. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's not being called. 418 left to go here. BHS driving here into Liberty Territory. Is that Josh Gallington down there? Is that young Gallington? 14? Gallington's 15. Oh, Gallatin's 15. Oh, that's both the older. Big game for the Renegades tomorrow night. I mean, tomorrow afternoon. Look forward to calling that on the radio airwaves. Matt will be down on the sideline. Renegades win, and they're in the playoffs. They lose, and they host the Golden Empire Bowl. So I don't want to say a win-win for Renegade fans at all, but a unique scenario. Brian, let's talk Pac-10 football tomorrow. Bruins, what is the story, my man? Vance, they've just been this way all year long. You don't know what team's going to show up, what defense is going to show up. I, I, I just think they're a team with no identity, and, and really, uh, generally, it seems like there's no true direction on what they want to do. But they found a way last week to win a game miraculously on, on a – I know Matt liked that kind of game, a kicker get, kicking the 50 yards for a victory. So, Who do they have tomorrow? Who's it tomorrow? It's uh, I right. just drew a blank. Sorry think about, think about it. Third and four. Third and four. 358 remaining here in the first half. Nasidis tries to get out to the right side, pitches it back. Oh goodness, what a beautiful play. A heads up, heads up play. He kicks it over to Miguel Wise as he was going down. First down. And obviously, that's not drawn up, Vance. And I don't, no know, I don't know how happy Gola's going to be about that. But nonetheless, hey, they got the first down, so he can't be too upset. But, yeah, just a heads-up play there by Nasita. But, you know, if, if that ball, he could have been the GOAT very easily if that ball would have missed Miguel Wise and would have landed on the turf. First and 10. And now Nasita's right behind Burrell. Burrell has Van Horn and Will out to his left. Hannibal in the slot now goes in motion. It's an option. Burrell kicks a fumble! And Burrell backed away from it. Looked like Burrell was going to jump on it, then he just kind of backed up. Boy, Nasita was slow to get up on that play as he got absolutely leveled. They thought he had the ball. You see him walking yeah. right there in the middle of your screen. He's, He's still shaking it off. Ref, man. He's definitely seeing some uh, some butterflies right now. But, yeah, the pitch by Burrell, we talked oh. about... Yeah, we talked about his ability to pitch the ball, and you know sometimes he's having to throw those long pitches, and that leaves very little room for error. Woo! They gained a yard. Hannibal in motion. Nasita pitches out of the end. Burrell does. Fumble! 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 Flag! Well, Kenny Davis picks it up for Liberty, but We'll see what the flag is as referee Derek Griffith getting the call here from his side judges. And the offense is coming on the football field, so it's going to be Liberty football. Oh, boy. It might have been a hold on the BHS offense, and, yep, that's what it is. They'll definitely decline that penalty. Well, Brian, we've seen a lot of this loose football stuff tonight, and this one comes back to haunt them. Well, Matt talked about it early in the first quarter. He said on these long pitches, but if you look at the pitch, the pitch has it's a very quick dart bullet type pass. That ball has to float real slow so they can grab it. You don't want that pitch like that, that hard pitch. It has to be a nice soft tumble for the back to get it. Your predecessor last year, last two years, Kevin Keyes would always talk about that relationship between the quarterback and the running back was a relationship there with the pitch, and that was not a cozy relationship right there. No, absolutely not, and it's not a cozy night out here either, so it doesn't make things any easier when the balls are right. Well, the scoreboard says second and nine, but it's first and 10. With 3.03 left, let's see if the Patriots could put something up here at the end of the first half. Wren's right behind quarterback, eye formation. Driller's chomping at the bit to get in there. They give it to Moyer. Moyer pounds his way through. Oh, what a big, big hit after he was slowed down just for a second. Is that who I think it is? Is that David Williams laying the wood? No, Williams is definitely down there all the time. I mean, he's Woo, boy. been all over the field for this driller defense tonight. You see Renz on the AV plus instant replay. Moyer. Not this hit, but the next one. Oh. oh. No, that was actually Matson. Yep. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Oh. 
Oh my gosh. I'll take it for you, Vance. Well, Vance, I'll tell you, you guys, you talk about legends all the time and drillers. There's one right there by the 30 yard line right in front of you, Michael Stewart. Big time driller legend in Mike football, Stewart. played for the Rams and Dolphins, also a big time baseball player, Fresno State and BC. They don't get much bigger than that. Michael Stewart. Stu. There he is. There he is. Rams gets out of trouble, floats one out there, and if it's caught, it's gonna be a great one, but it's not. Oh, almost picked off. Huff did everything he could to break up that near interception oh my goodness well on the third and four vance backed up deep in their own territory at the 31 yard line they decide to go with the pass and you know ren's losing his footing a little bit there but he still gets out of the pressure and that's just a poorly thrown ball but oh man huff got his hand in there right at the last second to knock that away from brandon johnson michael stewart where would you rank him amongst drillers well, I think, you know, he has to be one of the top guys. You got to remember in high school, he was a lineman because was because uh, the running back was Marshall Dillard running the ball all the time. So, so they, you didn't get the chance to do anything else. But, you know, you look at overall, when you start saying college and pro, he's got to be one of the great ones. Michael Stewart, the driller, a renegade. And a Fresno State Bulldog. And then a Ram. I love the fact that he was a Dolphin. Yeah. You know, he goes back to a throwback era, too. Sure. To Vance, when guys were, were superstars in, in more than one sport. And just as dominant as he was in football, he was also as dominant as a baseball player. Couldn't get a ball by him. Couldn't get a ball by him. Him and Todd Littlejohn and Casey, what a, what a football. Marshall Dillard. Oh, my goodness. T.C. McKay. Right here on this football field, first and 10, Burrell trying to evoke that passion and history. Flip Swilson out to Johnson. Johnson hitting hard, thrown out of bounds. Boy, there was a serious battle taking place on the line of scrimmage between Cody Temple and about three drillers. <laughs> well, with a minute 24 left here before half, wanted to mention that both defenses are giving up an average of just about 14.7 points a game. So it's, this isn't uh, anything unusual to see the scoreboard reading 7-0 right now at this point in the game. But what's funny is that BHS came into this game averaging 41 points a game. But remember, both these teams struggle passing the ball. Neither one is a great passing team, so you're going to get killed on the pass. And I say that somebody wide open. Look at this. Well, a great play call, the roll out to the right. Burrell looking back to his left, finding Brandon Johnson, who just caught that last pass, but Burrell got drilled after that pass was thrown. You see here on the AV Plus Insta Replay, Burrell slowing up right here. He gets drilled by Walker right there as he lets go of the ball, but he finds a wide open Johnson. And they take it down to the 20-yard line. There's going to be a timeout call by Liberty. And, that, and that's just where your safety, especially when they play that run-up cover two, that's just the safety's making a mistake, getting caught up and watching everything go in the backfield. And I'm telling you, and it can happen. I mean, people watch TV and say, well, how can it happen? It happens. You know, you're, when you're out there playing that secondary, sometimes you're also, especially in the zone, you have a tendency more to look around and see what's going on and lose track of people, especially when that quarterback rolls out. Receivers are able to get behind and get lost, like, like Johnson did on that. But again, that's the way they've passed the ball, both teams, fellas, when they've had big plays like that on busted covers. Neither one of them are going to be like what you would say, Centennial, being able to really pass the ball when they want to, hit who they want to, and really methodically move a ball in the, in the air. They're going to be a team really going off for big plays. All right, a buck 08 left here in this first half. And the drillers, an opportunity to put some more points on the board. The Patriots have had a couple chances and uh, actually missed a 38-yard field goal here in the second quarter, wide right, but now it's all about the drillers trying to trying to get a, you know, be nice if they got a two touchdown lead if you're a driller fan, but want to put themselves at least in good position for three. Here we go, first and 10. Burrell, again, option, out to Hannibal. Hannibal, hit hard, he delivers some punishment too. Woo, boy. Oh, I timeout, love it. Timeout being called here. Or check that. They were just going to stop the clock to move the chains, but BHS running the hurry-up offense right now. 
But yeah, big hit by Hannibal. First and 10. See it right there. Here's the snap. And what a beautiful run, an absolutely beautiful run. Touchdown, BHS. Silas Casitas gets his second one. Contact, spin, dive, touchdown, six points. Beautiful. Now that's how they draw it up, but what a spin move right there. What a spin move by Nasita at about the five yard line to free up off of a tackler with 42 seconds left. BHS about to go up by two touchdowns pending this extra point by Parker Campbell, who has a fumble recovery tonight. You know, guys, now right now, if you're the drillers, the coaching staff, you gotta be talking to your special team guys. They've almost given up two big kickoff returns. They gotta shore up that coverage, because especially with Liberty, they've been able to show against Centennial getting big returns. And the last thing you want is a, a kickoff return coming back, putting you in 14-7. Very, very good point, Brian. And keep in mind, Cordoba ran the opening kickoff up to the 40-yard line, and then Jounty was about to go the distance, but he got hit from behind and fumbled the football. So you're very right, Brian. I wonder if they'll just try to keep it on the ground, maybe squib it here. My, you know, I, my, I don't my. know if, the, if Parker can get the ball into the end zone. Uh, man, it doesn't seem like he has been able to yet. So I think they have to definitely talk to these guys and say, hey, you got to stay in your lanes. You got to have good coverage because there's been some big holes in that return game. Well, you know what definitely doesn't help, Brian, is that he has very low trajectory on his kickoffs. So that gives the return team plenty of time to set up, and it doesn't allow his guys to get down there as quickly. Exactly. Well, there's no win tonight to speak of. The flag is straight down so that won't play a factor into it 14 nothing drillers lead it's been a well played first half liberty's had their opportunities haven't been able to capitalize the drillers have given the football away a few times and still able to put up 14 with 42 seconds left as brian mentioned and matt agrees it's a very important kick right now not give these liberty patriots even a shot at the end zone here it comes it's long, and I think this one's going to carry. And it does, so it'll be first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Well, there's your answer. Campbell finally getting a good one off his foot. And, and that's about as good as he can hit it right there, fellas. There you go. You're watching High School Football Game of the Week exclusively shown on Bright House Network's Bakersfield. And some big news for Bright House Network's. Are you kidding me? Tomorrow, tomorrow, Bright House Networks is offering its digital HD customers 3D coverage of the Oregon number one team in the country versus California matchup shown live from Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, California at no additional cost. Coverage of the game of the game will be provided by Versus, but you have to have a 3D TV for that to happen. So please don't call me up if you don't have a 3D TV. Here it is, first and 10, and Moyer takes it. Clock's gonna get stopped on a timeout or no, they're gonna let it roll. Otherwise, it'll just be a very, very blurry game, Vance, if you but don't Thanks for pointing that out. Matt shot us all an email today and said, hey, we got to promote this. So the big shots at Bright House got a hold of us and said, please do it. And it's going to be in 3D if you have that equipment. Renz, seeing 3D in defense right now. What a nice play. Going to chew up a lot of time and a big open field tackle out there. And uh, they're going to call a timeout. They call one timeout at least in this series to try to see if they can take a stab at it. Nice play, cuts across the field with it, but took a big hit. Yeah, I don't know about this, Brian, but I think that they should probably just sit on this right now with five seconds left, and you know, you don't have a throwing quarterback per se. What do you think? Eh, you never know. Well, you can't take the timeouts and, and carry them over, and the 14 nothing. if you do throw the ball deep downfield like they did earlier, the, the odds of it getting caught, intercepting the return are slim to none. If they try to throw anything short, which I'm th and, and, and if it happens sometimes with quarterbacks, that's the ball that can be picked off and run back. So oh, I think it fumble. has to be something you're definitely going to go downfield with. But they might just set everything up and do a draw play. You just never know. But, but is it, for me, it's either going to be a draw or it's going to be way downfield. Well, Liberty received the ball to open the game, so BHS is going to get it first in the second half here. Or when we get there, of course. Officially, it's third and two. Let's pump it up, come on. 
All right, here we go. And they go to Moyer. Moyer looking for some room. Moyer cuts back upfield and chews up some yards, and that chews up the clock, and we're done with the first half. 14 to nothing. The Drillers lead the Patriots after this short break. We'll be back with a third quarter high school football game of the week, playing for a share of the lead title tonight at BHS. The Patriots trail by two touchdowns. Back in a moment. Got a job to do? Premier Equipment Rentals is your answer. Residential or industrial, we've got exactly what you need to get the job done. Whether it's a drill, trencher, bobcat, backhoe, or excavator, you can always count on Premier Equipment Rentals. And with our new extended hours, we're available when you need us. Check us out at 3217 Patton Way and 5001 Stein Road, or give us a call to find out more. Don't forget to ask about our weekend specials. Make your next project a breeze with Premier Equipment Rentals. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970. With Dan Patrick in the morning. And Jim Rome, 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports. It's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. back everybody third quarter about ready to start at halftime it's always cool vibe for brian myself and matt say hi to some friends say hi to some people chris clayton sean daniels two basketball powerhouses here locally mike stewart also got to say hi to my man big walker his son nathan walker a sophomore for these liberty patriots who'd you say hi to brian uh, i saw chris and sean i went over Spent some time with Greg Kerr for a minute. And oh, the dean. Around. Yeah, just making a little circle around it, around the field. Matt, I said hi to Sammy in the truck and uh, his little brother, and you know, <laughs> not quite at the level you guys are. Endearing himself to the Bright House Networks production group. Believe me, my friend, that'll get you absolutely everywhere. Awesome. Super Sam tonight. There's Carlos Sanguiano, Sammy's younger brother, huffing it, getting it down the field. Let's go, let's go, let's go, boys. Here's the kickoff right now. <laughs> Here we go. It's a hammer, and it's drilled into the end zone, so it'll be first and 10 BHS at their own 20, 14, and nothing to score. Matt, we're hearing at halftime, Centennial all over Frontier. What's that mean? Yeah, before halftime, actually, 35-3 to three Centennial leading over Frontier. So, you know, if that game keeps going as it is, then this game is going to be for a share of the SWYL title. You know, it could have been outright if Centennial would have been, uh, would have got an L tonight, but it doesn't look like it's going to end up this way. So this game is going to be for the a share of the SWYL title. Somebody tonight is going to walk out of here with a share of the title. First play from the line of scrimmage, third quarter. Burrell. Option. This time pitches it out. It's Brandon Johnson. Brandon Johnson cuts back upfield, brought down about the 35-yard line. And Mills wants the flag. If, if you see that, you know, Nasita, he's jumping, he's moving in the backfield. I don't know if the referee's just not noticing it or what, but Nasita is all over the place in that backfield before the snap. And uh, you mentioned Coach Mills wants the flag. Did you see what for, Vance? Well, he's all over young Van Horn. He's telling the referee, Derek Griffith, what he thinks about it. And Richard Van Horn looks at says, huh, what? Let's see if Nasita does a little move in there. Far left of your screen. <laughs> He's moving. Burrell, this time on keeper. Thought about it. And 37-yard line. 
And a very pensive fan looking on. Great defensive pursuit there by Liberty on the right side of the, of the defensive line. Able to limit Burrell there just to two yards, but after getting a first down on their opening play, you know, Burrell trying to run that option once again, second down and eight. I had a chance to say hi to Dr. Roger Fessler, social athletic director, senior social athletic director at uh, Cal State, and his son, Rufy. See Roger next Friday. Burrell looks across the middle, has a man, finds his man. It's a dart, and it's complete, and it's a first down to the 35-yard line. Whoa, what a beautiful pass. No flags on the play, complete out there to Johnson. And he's, Coach Mills is uh, yelling at the referee again. He definitely wants some sort of call, but you see here on the AV Plus instant replay, boy, Johnson might have got an early break there. Yeah, that, that was arena football style, Vince. And that's what he's yelling at, Brian. I mean, a lot of those BHS players, I mean, they, I, I think what they're doing, Brian, is they're anticipating the snap count as wide receivers, and they're getting a great jump off the ball. So, first right. and ten, I formation just underway in the third quarter. In motion goes Nasita. They throw out to Nasita to the left side. Nasita met and brought down after about a one-yard gain. A driller down at midfield. And he's being helped up. Looks like he's going to be okay. It's one of the big guys, Angel Caraballo. 5'10", 275 pounds. He's the center on this team, so that, I always want to make sure that snap. So he's getting a mouthful tonight from Cody Temple. Absolutely. What a matchup, Temple right on top of the football. Look at the right upper right part of your screen, the long hair. Look at that action. Burrell looks out to the left, has a man open, should be a touchdown, and it is, and it is Richard Van Horn. That was a well-designed play, Liberty in a 3-4 defense. Only three men rushing the ball, like you said, Cody Temple was lined up right on the ball, so Burrell had plenty of time and you think in a 3-4 defense that you have enough secondary to, to not allow this to happen. But Burrell, you know, I think what happened is that they were thinking that Burrell was going to go to the right side to Nasita, but that left Van Horn wide open. Big well, touchdown for the Drillers. It's senior night, and the senior, Richard Van Horn. Another Van Horn scores in Griffith Field. It's up and it's through. Now it's 21-0 at the beginning of the third quarter. Well, that was an impressive drive, Brian. Well, Vance, I'll tell you right now, Burrell's starting to become efficient, and I said it earlier, if he becomes efficient in the passing game, he doesn't have to throw the ball 30 times, 25 times the way Cody Kessler will or some of the other quarterbacks in the area. He has to be efficient on those 12 to 15 passes he's going to make on this run. If he can go 10 or 15, 12 or 15, 9, 8 or 10, those kind of numbers and those big target and hitting those big plays, the drillers could be very tough in the playoffs. And Matt, you combine that with his legs, all of a sudden he really becomes the weapon everyone's hoped that he would be. Yeah, he does, and you know it's it, it helps that he has a great defense behind him as well. But you know, up 21 to nothing right here, we're going to see what Liberty's made of because uh, they definitely need to get something going. We, might have, we were talking about that letdown coming off the Centennial game. Well, the Golden Hawks had. The big letdown, hangover, whatever term you want to use after their driller win. And the Patriots snuck in and got them. And now the drillers are looking at a three touchdown lead here. You know, fellas, I'm not sure so much of a letdown is just that against BHS, again, you got to look at their two losses. The two losses they had were teams that were exceptionally good at passing the ball. Yeah, you're right, Brian. I haven't lost sight of that at all, what one bit whatsoever. But we haven't seen. Well, again, it goes back to your point of this driller defense. We, we also we haven't seen Moyer just you know busting out as are these the footballs? The Bright House Network's footballs. Have you have you picked some up? Have you procured some of those for us yet, Matt? I have not. As a matter of fact, I need to uh, do that. If you're hanging out with the production guys during halftime, pill for something for us, my man. Because <laughs> you haven't brought dinner all year long. No dinner. I mean. No nothing. Moyer up to the left side. What he's brought to us, Brian, is his skill, Moyer. his talent, his ability, his panache, his my, stick to itiveness. My ability to uh, count his, punt yardage. His, his research. Yeah. His, well, Tell us about the laces on a kick on, on a uh, PAT or a field goal attempt. That goes without saying. I also like the fact that he picks a lot of great games, too. 
<laughs> Young Matt Alvarez. We saw it coming. He was on the air with us a couple years ago. We saw it coming. Renz waiting, has a lot of time, it's too much time, because he ends up getting hammered at the end of the play. Hung out of that football long enough to where he gets drilled at the end. Incomplete pass, and he got hit by Donovan Rutherford. You know, every hit is just amplified that much more tonight because of how cold it is. With 9.18 left to go in the third quarter, it's not getting any warmer, but it's, you know, Liberty's offense needs to heat up, that's for sure. You see the play action fake on the AV plus instant replay as Renz rolls out to the right. And yeah, he has, has a lot of time, but he runs out of it real quick, and then he gets smacked by Donovan Rutherford. Well, this defensive backfield for the Drillers really doing a good job, Brian. You know, they, they really are, man. And again, you know, Matt, you alluded to it in pregame last week about the passing game is not their forte. Oh, As boy. we see right there is miscommunication. And Rince takes another big hit. And, you know, now you're playing the ball, and you got Burrell start to click on all cylinders with his passing game, and the drillers have multiple guys that can run the ball. This could, like I said, fellas, this could be a situation where they're down four touchdowns and the drillers are off and running. Well, Liberty hasn't played this bad since October 22nd when they went to Stockdale and lost 31-3. to And BHS is a team that beat Stockdale last week 26-10. to I mean, Liberty's offense is just anemic right now. Low snap, bobble at the five-yard line, in trouble, blocked. Well, for all the praise that we gave Mariscal, he made a bad decision there because if the ball is snapped that low, he had plenty of time to pick it up and kick it, but instead he decided to run it. And if you're going to do that, you might, as well just, other... you might as well just throw it out the back of the end zone, yeah, Brian. Yeah, you got to run the other way. You see, he right here. the wrong way. You got to go towards that touchdown. Yeah, he had time to kick it right there. And if anything, get it off left footed. I mean, it's, I know it's not going to go very far, but once you try to get set up to start a punt again, the best thing to do is just throw it out the back of the end zone, give up two points instead of a potential seven right now. Uh-oh, first and goal from the nine, Nasidis right behind Burrell, but Burrell could just as easily throw this or run it in himself. And they throw it out to the left side, it's intended out there for Brandon Johnson, and that was not executed very well at all. That was a high pass by Burrell, but they still are in great position to Put another nail into this coffin right now with 8.57 left to go in the third. But, and again, Vance, you said you never know. You said it best. The game's not over until Fat Lady sings, and she's nowhere to be seen right now, but still. Well, she's in there. She's in that little stadium under there warming up. She's warming up. <laughs> she's doing the she's, scales, Vance. You know the, you know. She's hitting her do re <laughs> She's do re mi Nasidis breaks out to the left. This time they make it happen. Nasidis with the catch, cuts back in. Touchdown, Rillers. The route is on. Well, Silas Nasita scores his third touchdown of the night. He's the MVP of this game thus far, unless you want to give it to BHS's defense for pitching the big goose egg right now. But that'll be his third touchdown tonight. BHS up big now. And if all if this keeps up, they're going to have a share of the SWYL championship. Well, Those fans loving it right there. I can't imagine that this is what the Liberty fans expected tonight. Up and through, 28-0. And another thing we didn't talk about is a lot of times it comes down to matchups. Sometimes you don't match up well with a team. Right. They don't match up well with BHS because their strength is against the strength against strength. And, and again, when you play that cover two defense they play, we talked about last week, my, Matt, when we were counting out, you know, there's six, seven defensive players covering the pass or five guys covering the pass. That's room to run the ball, and the drillers are just taking advantage of that opportunity to run. And then they've been opportunistic with some pass plays, hitting big pass plays when they've counted for them, and really just putting them in the hole, a big hole. And this, again, this offense is not designed to be down 21 nothing, 14 nothing, it needs to be in the game, in the hunt, with a chance. And the defense, fellas, for the most part, has given the Liberty offense a chance. They just haven't been able to do anything against this defense. And keep in mind, Brian, that almost every turnover that Liberty has had, BHS has capitalized on. So they're making, taking advantage of every single opportunity that they've been given tonight. 28 nothing to score. 8.50 remaining in this third quarter. So unless we see a 
Herculean effort of a turnaround here by the Patriots. Nothing shows us that the drillers are going to slow down. All right, that could be returnable, and it is. Caught at the 15-yard line. Looking for some room, gets a lot of space, and that's Davis. Davis brought down at the fumble! We just oh, talked boy. about it. Just talked about it, Vance. Got to hold on to that football if you want any chance of getting back into this game. Hey, how about Premier Equipment Rentals? Thank you, Lynn. And everybody over there, Premier Equipment Rentals, for being a sponsor for us year after year after year. These great scissor lifts to give us these killer shots up here. And, of course, Audiovisual Plus for our instant replay, sponsorship, everything you want in Audiovisual Plus, including the podium. What about our great media sponsors? Are you kidding me? Fox Sports Radio, Crab Radio, our crab crush of the evenings coming up soon. And the Prime Minister himself, Todd Strain, KGET. Friday football extra. Thank you to our sponsors. Here we go. First and 10 for the Patriots. And a ferocious throwdown by David Williams. David Williams making a name for himself tonight. Brian, he's been out there all season. We haven't called his number a lot, but tonight he's sure getting the pub. Well, you know, Vance, I mean, tonight he's playing a, a great game. And again, this game is playing into his wheelhouse. They're running the ball. He's going to make plays. We saw him in Centennial passing the ball out in the first half. We didn't get the chance to see him do his thing. Second and three, pass out to the right side. It's a nice pass, good reception, and uh, should be a first down or very close to it. Caught out there by Ross Huff. A good pass and catch there on the right side. Liberty starting to move the ball a little bit here. It's gonna be a first and 10 at the 41 yard line. Down 28, nothing here, just under the eight minute mark of the third quarter. Trying to get something going here. Cody Renz, Carson Moyer has been relatively He's, he hasn't done anything tonight, Vance. I was looking for a good word to describe it, but quiet. What a nice big run. Jonty gets up to the 30-yard line. That's going to be a first and 10 right after a first and 10. That's a nice run right there. So, so they go to 28 instead of 22. Well, first and 10s seem to breed first and 10s for this Liberty offense. And you see here Cody wrenches the handoff right at the middle to Corbin Jonty. Good stiff arm there. And then a good job of holding onto the balls. You see Hannibal, man, this goal of, goal of coach defense, they stripped the ball. They're, they're taught how to strip the ball, that's for sure. Patriots trying to make something happen here. Ball at their own, at the uh, uh, Drillers 30 yard line, first and 10. I formation, hard count, flags are going to come. Let's see who the call is on. Well, I think that may be on Liberty. And if it is, boy, I'll tell you what Coach Mills is going to say. Now, wait a second. Nope. It's on the Drillers. On the Drillers. Yeah, they ran the hard count there. Ren's giving a little bit of a head fake. And well, you know what? That might, yeah, they, they, they charged, charged in, but I mean, at the same time, that ball was snapped simultaneously. That, that was a little closer than it looked. Yeah, that was, that was pretty close. Maybe they just got a good jump. Seven minutes even remaining in the third. First and five from the Drillers 25. They're hopping all over the football field. Renz takes a step back, throws one into the corner. Let's see what happens, and it is going to be broken up. Two drillers all over. Daniel Kinder and our main man, Brian Adams, picks it up. Look at that spiral. B Sting himself just flicks it out there. Oh, Second good, and five. Good play by Brandon Johnson on the defensive end to break that play up as that pass was intended for Kinder. And Kinder, six-foot wide receiver. See there, just another lob. Nine iron sand wedge thrown up there. And that's a dangerous pass thrown into double coverage. Should have been picked off. Second and five. Everybody coming for the drillers. This time they give it to Moyer. Now Moyer back to his usual self of plowing ahead and bringing three or four guys with him. Nice 12 yard run. First down Patriots. Man, the, the, the Bakersfield drillers, they blitzed Brian Adams on that play. Well, that's what he likes to do, Vance. He likes to bring the house at times and again, they time up a lot of things. If you watch Drillers since the Gola era, they make a lot of tackles, guys, right next to the snap in the backfield. Another equipment issue here for Dom or for Rutherford, Donovan Rutherford of the Drillers and referee back judge is going to get that all squared away, and we're back to game action. The two brothers, Dominic and Donovan, seniors, fumble. 
And look who recovered it. Oh, they're going to give it to him. Turnover. A Rutherford recovered it. Barely got his last name out of my mouth, recovers a fumble. That was Dominic. You see here, a great play. Oh, that's just a great tackle by Dominic Rutherford. As he puts his hand, he gets his hand right on the ball. And another, another Liberty turnover, Brian. Oh, yeah, they do boy. It. That's what I said. They like to come hard on that pressure and hit gaps, and they get you right in the backfield, and they get to sometimes the back before you can even get the ball secured, just like that, and another big turnover for the defense. In motion this time is Piper, and they throw it to Piper. Piper drops the football. He was taking off, wasn't he? He was out of there. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Perrell put it right on the money. Uh, Piper, it would have been a good little first down play. Could have gained a couple yards if Piper comes off the field in favor of Nasita, who already has three touchdowns tonight. Clock stop, 6-10, remaining in the third, second and 10. 28 to nothing. It's been a good football game, but the drillers have dominated on the scoreboard. Three-man front. Cody Temple going to USC, but now he stands straight up above the center. And the flag is thrown here. And Cody Temple, just he is really having his way with whoever he decides at the time. And that time, it was Max Heflin. Well, they finally got BHS on the false start, Vance. I mean, we've been seeing it. They've been just a hair early all night, and they finally got him on that call. And it's going to be a second and 15 now. Well, comes at a good time because Liberty needs something. They've got to pick up on some kind of good vibration here. And now the drillers just chew this clock up and just eat away. Well, if they keep it on the ground, they'll be able to, but when they go to the air, they seem to just be going to the flats unless they run that little quick pump fake, pump fake play to the flats. Burrell has Van Horn. Man, wide open He's in field. trouble, and he gets thrown down for about a five or six yard loss. Careful, careful, Patriots pick up a penalty here if they're not careful. Oh, he had Gabriel Cardenas wide open on the left side, and I think he saw him right at the last minute. Cardenas was wide open on the left side of the field, Vance. If, if that would have been an easy touchdown, he could have walked in for a touchdown, flipped a couple burgers, but you see here AV plus instant replay. Burrell rolls left. You'll see here at the very end right here, he'll look to the left, and he sees his man, and he wants to throw it, but he can't. He doesn't have enough room. So brought down That's out there by was, Glenn, he was, Brian. He was open guys on commentator time. <laughs> Fiddler, the big hit for the loss. Third and 20. Burrell rolls to his left, stands in the end zone, kicks it out here to Hannibal. Hannibal down at about the, uh, we'll say it's the 16-yard line. So, hey, nice stop by Liberty Defense. Yeah, that's exactly what they needed, and they got Kinder back there to return the punt instead of Davis. And we've seen Davis having a little trouble over the last couple weeks returning punts. I mean, keeping his hands on the ball, and he fumbled fumbled a couple times tonight. And the is going to be able to boot this one. Well, he's all by himself back there, Kinder. And I, I think they had too many. Liberty had to burn a timeout, I believe. Yeah, I, I don't believe. see any flags on the field. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve guys on the field. You know what? what? Right before they started that play, I said, man, it looks like a lot of silver helmets out there. Well, they didn't get the timeout, Vance, because they're calling the, they're calling a uh, penalty, on the defense. So it's going to move it up five more yards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's 12 guys in the field right now. And okay. There, there you go. <laughs> I thought there was. I didn't want to hex them or anything, but I'm looking at there saying, they've got one too many guys, and that's, oh boy. So Brian runs off. Now it's 11 on 11. Kinder waiting. And a low kick, and it could, oh, and it bounces over Kinder's head, and he decides to field it. Oh boy. That was the equivalent of a hard grounder that just took a big bounce over the infielder's head right at the last minute. Oh, goodness. Watch this, baby, if we can see it on our Audio Visual Plus replay. Here it comes, right at him. Well, that's going to be a 44-yard punt. 
And you see here, you know, it's when those yeah. when it hits the ground yeah. like that, you got to expect. You have to expect that it's going to pop up. You just have no idea when. Brian, you ever been in that situation? Yep. And uh, I just we just let it go. Yeah, yeah that's, one, that's the smartest say, thing to do. You try to make something happen there. First and 10. Let's see if the Patriots can put something together. Moyer, it's one way to bring him down by his ankles. And a nice ankle tackle by Kyle Pope. Special hello out there tonight. A special hello to my niece, who is a sophomore, a, a senior. I better not blow this one. A senior at Bakersfield High School. The incomparable, beautiful, talented, gorgeous, and stunning a high achiever, Crosby Dameron. Hi, Crosby, my beautiful niece. Second and five. Renz flushed out of the pocket. Oh, he looks good. And he gets down about the 49-yard line. Again, Brian, Matt, weigh in on this, but to me that just seems like a weapon I would use a lot more. Well, man, I think they're really trying to pass the ball. He's just scrambling and making something happen and breaking things down. So maybe but, that's what you do. But, like, I mean, like, we saw last week at Centennial. He was a weapon. You know, they, they rolled out last week, and Centennial was very undisciplined on the outside. But the drills, I think one time we talked about earlier about containment, and since then the drills have been under control and forced them to either pull up or go back across the grain. So the, give the driller defense a lot of credit. They've done a great job on stopping the run in Moyer and then also containing Ren. We have a timeout on the field, 324 remaining in the third quarter, and this officiating crew has just done a, a, an outstanding job, and we've just seen it all year long. The Kern County officials. Just another stellar performance tonight, Matt. Who do you have? Uh, the referee, head referee, Derek Griffith. The umpire, Reuben Blair. The line judge, Norm Fox. Norm! The head linesman, my good buddy, Colin Clark. He played in that game with me up in, uh, oh. up in Taft. I've known him since junior high. Back judge, Arlie Hall. And on the box, Glenn Toll. All members of the Kern County Officials Association. If you want to be an official in Kern County, contact them. Do it. There's a website. And also, if you, you know, you're thinking about basketball, if that's your game or baseball or softball or wrestling, if you know that's your sport and you know it and you want to help out, couldn't admire you more for something like getting involved with the Kern County Officials Association. We just had a great, great year this year. I know that one game, I think it was West and Golden Valley, there was a thousand flags, but there was also a million ejections too. So what are you going to do? Right. 28 nothing. Third and one, everybody in the box. And Renz tries to muscle his way up, and I think he does, first down. And uh, that'll just keep the ball going. Keep him going, keep yeah. something happening. A good job to keep this drive alive here by Liberty. And they get a first down right at the 49-yard line with 3.13 left to go here in the third quarter. They've got a long, large, tall hill to climb, though. What's well, a great shot right there, Cody Temple inside someone's camera that's nice hey carlos don't steal shots get your own shots carlos first and ten wrench drops back he's in trouble wrench has got to get rid he runs to the right oh boy he's on the move and uh, oh a big hit the flags are going to fly a dangerous big hit and it was david williams who delivered the punishment and now it's getting pretty heated over there wrench pops up but that was a Big late hit by David Williams. You know, I think that was a message sending hit Vance because yeah, that, yeah because Williams knew he was going out of bounds and Jounty got a hold, away with a little hold there. But you see on the AV Plus instant replay, watch the end of this play. Williams knows that Renz is going out of bounds. Williams knows that Renz is defenseless. He's he's two yards out of bounds at that point. Oh. I think that was a message sending hit, knowing that you're up 28 nothing, knowing that you can afford to do something like that. But he might get a little bit of a uh, chewing out yeah. when he gets back to the sideline. That's exactly what happened. It might be a message in the hit, but he got the message just now from Coach Gold. He had his headset off and was on him about that kind of play. That's just not the kind of plays, again, that you'll see a driller team make. Both of you those, guys are those, correct. Those uh, senseless penalties. First and 10, Liberty. So Williams delivers the hit. But look at this. Now it's Liberty with a first down, and Moyer battles his way up. Finally stopped. But, you know, Brian, that's fourth down if that doesn't happen. And, and, and that's exactly what, what Coach Gold is feeling about. And that's just not a smart heads up play. You know, you seize out of bounds, you can pull up. You got to have some restraint and some self control. See here on the AV Plus instant replay, Moyer just, he's been relatively quiet tonight. I mean, I'm sure he's got 70, 80 yards on the stat sheet, but this BHS defense, you know, when he tries to run up the middle, the interior line just collapses. The linebackers come in there and they just gang tackle him. 
Did I see his stats right? 180 a game, is that right? Moyer, oh, this time he runs into some traffic. One of them is own man, the other is the big fellow, David Price, 6'2", 215. That's just about, just about 180 a game. Are you kidding me? 180 yards a game. And uh, he runs into his own man, which is Nathan Swainston, but Swainston was trying to take care of Anthony Davis. So together, between Davis and Swainston, it's a good 500 pounds. 480 pounds. Yeah. Broken play, Rins in trouble, throws it back, fumble! BHS football. Ouch, 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 ouch. Well, by my count, that's the fifth turnover tonight. Sixth. Fifth or sixth by Liberty. I mean, it's, wow. it's no wonder that the score is 28 nothing, because BHS, man, oh. what a huge hit. That's definitely a contender for the Crab Crush. Kyle Pope delivering another huge hit. This BHS defense has been flying all over the field. A broken play turned into a broken heart. A busted, busted chops. fourth quarter here. It's <laughs> going to be rough for these Patriots to climb back in this thing now. Burrell fires on this one out to Wise. Wise going backward, cuts across the grain. Was that Wise? Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Ryan seems to be enjoying that one. Thank you, B. Under a minute left here in this third quarter. And the Liberty Faithful, who was so boisterous and loud and enjoyed such a wonderful come from behind victory last week, starting to peel out here in this cool, chilly weather. Second and seven, 40 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Burrell takes the snap, goes to his left, has a man downfield, floats it out there. Oh my goodness, just a flick of the wrist and it was a 35 yard pass and nearly caught by Gabriel Cardenas. Now Cardenas able to get away from the coverage of Ben Lee out there on the left side of the field. And just like you said, it was just a little flick of the wrist by Burrell just out of the reach of Cardenas. You know, you think if Burrell just, he's had about four or five passes tonight where he's just missed his target. I mean, this, this score could be up in the 40s. Brian, we called this game, we called it a BHS game when Burrell was a sophomore and was unleashing him his sophomore season, so he's got the gun. Third and seven. Burrell, slow call. Takes a look at everything. Has to see this right behind him. In motion is Hannibal. They go an inside handoff. This is Johnson. Johnson. And there's a flag on the play. Nice tackle out there by Brandon Francis. It looks like that this, call would be. Yeah, it looks like this, this might go back for a holding penalty. As head referee Derek Griffin looks up to the press box and signals holding. Head coach for the Patriots, Tony Mills. Head coach for the Drillers is Paul Gola. And they had a moment of silence here, Matt, right at the end of half, at the beginning of halftime. Yeah, they did a, you know, one of the, an old VHS football player graduated in 2005. I'm trying to remember his name as we speak, Vance, but, uh, you know, it's very, very sad, you know, passed away in uh, Afghanistan about a week ago. I remember opening up the email, you know, one of the, one of the jobs, you know, working as a news radio reporter, morning news reporter, you know, you have to open up all those emails and see the uh, Department of Defense casualties. And, you know, whenever you see one that's from Kern County or one that's close to home, it just, uh, it hits you pretty hard, and it definitely hit this community hard. Burrell connects out there to Van Horn. Van Horn brings it down to the 50-yard line. So that'll uh, move the chains again. Brian, educate our fans out there that aren't drillers. Is that Betty Driller or Dottie Driller or Debbie Driller? Dottie. Dottie Driller, as we just saw in our shot. I'm sorry, all the BHS fans are mad at me, but I'm an Arvin Bear. That's it, 28 nothing. end of three. When we come back, one more quarter, and the Drillers might have a share of the league title. Back in a moment on Bright House Networks. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports, all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970. With Dan Patrick in the morning. And Jim Rome, 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports. It's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. 
It's the most anticipated basketball season in recent history, and the biggest names in sports are teamed up. The NBA and TNT are bringing you the premier matchups every Thursday with sports' most entertaining studio crew. Chuck, Ernie, and Kenny, must-see TV. The game is different, and the stakes are higher. From rivalries renewed to rivalries anew, the stage is set for show-stopping drama. Kobe. Don't miss NBA on TNT Thursdays. Well, we start the uh, fourth quarter with a Burrell hook up to Van Horn almost, and that was just outside the fingertips of Richard Van Horn. Richard Van Horn is a senior. Seniors night tonight, get a lot of seniors in. <laughs> She's having a great time looking up at that scoreboard. She's loving it. Second and 10. In motion is Wise. And Nasidis takes it up the middle, then cuts to the right side. Uh-oh, Nasidis breaking free. Knocked out of bounds at the 31, 29-yard uh, line. Ooh, boy, that was almost another one. Yeah, dangerously close to being a late hit there also. And uh, Vance, I want to go back to that, what we were mentioning before the break. Uh, Brett Land was his name. Brett Land, 2005 graduate of BHS, was a resident of Porterville, listed out of Wasco by the Department of Defense. But yeah, just a huge tragedy. You know, anytime we lose a serviceman from around this area, it just uh, it really hits home. And they had a moment of silence before the game, you know, Veterans Day being yesterday. Yeah, there's a flag there, a little motion on the outside, the right side of the uh, line for the drillers. And as we see Cody Temple come back in, and he's going to start to get his reps here in this fourth quarter. That cheerleader there is uh, getting a lot of TV time. She, she knows when that camera's on. Good for her. First and 15, the drillers move it back five yards. Well, Matt, after this play, I'd like to get your thoughts on what I believe to be is going to be a two-touchdown victory for the Trojans tomorrow against your Cats. But, <laughs> hey, you never know. First and 15, Burrell sends Johnson in motion. And the ball goes to Nasidas. He's all alone. Nasidas makes a beautiful cut at the 20. He cuts back into the 10-yard line, still on his feet. First down at the 8-yard line. Drillers in the neighborhood about to knock on the door. What a big, big play here. Silas Nasida, he's having the game of his senior year. Yep, three touchdowns. And how uh, apropos on senior night, Nasida already has three touchdowns. And you see just... Has a lot of space, plenty of space. Then he jukes Huff right there, and then he makes a spin move to get a couple more yardage. And two Liberty players just crashed into each other right there at the very end of that play. They're right below us. That, that shot you're seeing right there is from the scissor lift that we're on. And it's going to be a timeout. It's going to be taken by Liberty. So now let's hear from University of Arizona via Foothill High School. Matt Alvarez, tell us about, listen closely, Brian, listen closely, the Arizona Wildcats hosting the Trojans tomorrow night, correct? Hosting the Trojans, gonna be down in Tucson, 58,000 strong. Are you the, going? I'm not going, I'm, I'll be at the BC game with you, Vance. Yeah, but they kick off at what time? They kick off at 4.30, They don't think. send a jet to come get you? No, not yet, not yet. I haven't, uh, I haven't organized it, I didn't right. call for it this week. All right, got it, so tell us about your take. Uh, Arizona hosting Troy, it's a big football game. Yeah, anytime USC comes into uh, Arizona, it's always a big football game. You know, as, as you can say, when USC comes anywhere, regardless of whether they're having an up year or a down year, you know, that place is going to be packed. It's going to be loud. Last time USC came down there, uh, it was 17-10. It was 10-10 most of the game. USC scored a late touchdown with Mark Sanchez. And uh, last year in the Coliseum, Arizona beat USC yep, yep. for the first time since, you know, God knows when. But... Yeah, very big football game tomorrow night. Very big. I, I don't agree with your prediction, but <laughs> I would hope not. We'll see how it goes. First and goal from the eight. Burrell hands the ball off to Nasita. Nasita kind of falls and climbs and claws his way to about the six-yard line. Brian, what's your take on the Trojans this year? You know, I, I think anytime you have a coaching change and, and a lot of turmoil that they had, you're going to have some issues and some time for kids to, to play together. You have some kids leave. But I think, you know, the one thing about them is they get some of the top talent every year in, in college football. So, look for them to rebound. But I think they go down in Tucson tomorrow. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Brian. 
Nasida in motion. Burrell takes a look at him, times it to where he's got some space to run. That's just as much Brian Burrell as it is Nasida. He waited long enough to give him some space, took a look at the defense, and then flicked it over there. Four touchdowns for Silent Nasida. Well, big game Silas. He's going to be, he already is one of the most dangerous weapons on this team. And you can guarantee that they're going to be, uh, whoever's playing them next week in playoffs, whoever has the. Uh, if great, they don't have a bye. Yeah, if they don't have a bye, whoever has the great privilege of facing them in either the first round or the second round, they're going to have to key on that guy all night long because he can do some serious damage. His jersey number is five, and there's 1027 remaining in this fourth quarter. Can he get number five? I would think that he could. Campbell, the snap, the hold, the kick, and it's right through. So the drillers have been close to perfect on offense, close. I guess that's an oxymoron, close to perfect. <laughs> you either are or you aren't. But they played a really good game on the offensive side of the ball. And then, Brian, if you look at the scoreboard, I know what you're thinking. Well, Vance, there's a zero over there for Liberty. So the defense has done their job as well tonight. What a showing by the drillers. Well, Vance, I mean, I think the defense really has set the tone. And uh, the way they've attacked the ball, as you said earlier, Matt, they're actually going after the ball with a vengeance to try to rip that ball out. So let's give the defense credit. And offensively, you know, they were trying to do some things, passing the ball, throwing the ball downfield, and it wasn't working out that well, but they went back to the running game, their bread and butter, and it just like it's got the rhythm back again, and then the Burrell really threw a nice ball right there. That's a much harder pass than you think for a quarterback to actually lead that running back like that or, or anybody swinging out from that backfield so he can catch the ball in stride and score. What do you think the Golden Hawks are thinking right now? They're beating up on Frontier, and they're hearing at their game that it's 35-0 to a, a team that's a, a team that beat them last week is now losing 35 to nothing. Do you smell rematch? I mean, well, what, what they better be thinking about is playoffs, and I wouldn't even because you can't do anything about what you didn't do last week. You didn't take care of All business, right. but they have a chance. And, and this is one thing I, I was listening to Coach Nixon talk to him after the game. And that's what he talked to him about: is one game not this one game is not going to define our season. Wow, all these. No, this is. Um, Wood, no, wait a minute. Cordova. Cordova. Hank Cordova, his ankle was about a millimeter from touching that goal line, and he still got it up to the 30. Hank Cordova. Well, we know that Liberty and BHS won't meet in the championship game because of seedings. They'll more than likely meet in the semifinals if both of them reach that point, possibly even before that, depending on... Uh, you know, the, the seedings in Porterville, I think that's where they come out of. Tomorrow they'll, they'll do it. How about Porterville? 10-0, the only undefeated team in the Valley. Or in the, uh, yeah, in, in, in our section, rather. Wow. Renz to Moyer. Moyer. And that's Williams. Williams working over Moyer. So that's been the personal matchup. The personal personnel of tonight's football game has been Moyer and Williams. And anybody that can slow down Moyer like Williams has gets my attention. What a fine football game. Had that late hit last quarter. Kind of stained it a little bit, but what an athlete. And we're speaking of David Williams, a six foot one, 210 senior linebacker. Haven't heard any whispers about what he's doing next year. Have you guys? No, I haven't heard anything either yet. The whistle blows, and it looks like it's going to be a Timeout. Timeout. Drillers. Coach Gola takes the headset off and comes, wants to meet with everybody. You're watching High School Football Game of the Week. My name is Vance Palm. I am joined up high on the Premier Equipment Scissor Lift, as always, with my partner, Matt Alvarez. Deep into his rookie year with Brian and I. He's just done a stellar job. Done a great job. I hear my main man, Carlos, yelling at me. So let me just wave with that yellow bar right across my face. <laughs> as good as I'll ever. That's as good as I'll ever look right there. And down on the grass, our driller and Bruin and captain, 13-year vet for high school football game of the week, Brian Adams. We love it. It's a blast what we do. Bo Redstone and I will start CSUB basketball next Wednesday on Bright House Networks. I don't know if it'll be the godfather or Bernard Johnson running that first game, but Zach Flores tonight running football, and he'll do our tip-off, our first game next Wednesday night. As Renz fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. Getting ran out of the pocket, and he's going to get hit, and he's going to get brought down by his jersey. 
And it's going to be Pope that stuck with it all the whole night, the whole time. Pope hung in there and brought him down, a sophomore. Well, Pope, Williams, both Rutherfords, Johnson, I mean, this BHS defense is absolutely flocking to the ball, and that's fast. why there's a big goose egg. They're very fast. Well, guys, you know, the one thing, the difference is last week he's able to get out, and he had time to throw because the contain was lost, and there was easy lanes to throw. Tonight, even if he's getting outside, they're still pursuing him where he can't sit up to throw the ball. Here's Renz with two receivers to the left. Renz rolls to the left now, looks shallow. He throws to Kenny Davis, and it's off his chest, incomplete. So with 8.45 left to go, it's going to bring up another fourth down here. Run off! Run off the damn field! And you hear <laughs> one of the coaching staff from Liberty not happy with his team. Through our ambient microphone, Carlos. <laughs> Oh, you boy. know what, what he's telling the kids are just because the score of the game you still play like you like you would play if you if the game was close you run off the field yep. because that's the attitude you have to have because you have to look, do the same thing Centennial said it's one game it's not a game that's going to define my career it's not the end of the season it's one game run off the field perfect deep snap nice punt let's see where this bounce takes it it's a football bounce for sure that bounces all over the place and lands right at the middle of the field at the 40 yard line 31-yard punt for Mariscal, who's got my early vote for all area, but I don't think I have a vote. I mean, I know, the, I know the media. You know, he. but what he does is very, he's a very good punter, Vance, from what I've seen. You know, he's able to cough and corner him. Last week against Centennial, he was, he played a vital role in Centennial not having good field position. Had it not been for game. Moyer, it been considered MVP of the game last week. Eight and a half. Three-man front for the Liberty Patriots. They trail by five touchdowns, and they have not scored yet. In motion. Uh-oh. They uh -oh. got him again. Uh-oh. 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 It's the last thing anybody wants to see on a chilly, cold night with 828 remaining in a blowout or these kind of mental error penalties. I said it right, Vance. It's very chilly. I'm up here in my BC windbreaker. Tomorrow afternoon, 1 o'clock kickoff. What a game. The Renegades hosting Canyons. They win, they're in. We'll be out tailgating at 7 in the morning if you want to come join us. No, Matt, I don't have the luxury of being a news celebrity like you. I'll be harvesting grapes till about 11. Look at this. Williams on the carry. Hey, what about this? Put the football in his hands now. Put the football in his hands now. I'll be harvesting burritos at 8 in the morning, Hey, man, so. harvest me a couple, will you? <laughs> well, yeah, they just decided to give the ball to Williams there. You know, Williams has done enough on the defensive end tonight. I guess they're signing they're going to reward him a little bit, giving him a little extra touches. Of course, you want to put a seat on the sidelines now. No use in uh, keeping him out there, risking an injury. 45-3 to three now, the score over at Centennial, over Frontier. Burrell. Fires one, and this was a pass that should have been caught. And Gabriel Cardenas should have hauled that one in. Uh, Ross Huff did a great job of getting in there. If Cardenas had caught the pass anyway, but you see Burrell just a three-step drop and then fires over to Cardenas, and it's a perfect pass. All Cardenas Boom. has to do is just catch it, and no dice. And then Huff comes in with a big hit, and then Cardenas says, no, thank you. 7.44, the clock stopped. Third and 13, Burrell hands the ball to Williams, a linebacker getting some carries now, and he gets brought down. No gain. And uh, they'll punt the football. Now well, Nasita does, does come out. He is gonna see some more uh, PT here, but as the punter. He's not having a bad night. He had a 46 yarder in the third quarter. That little slow roller, or that fast roller rather, that took a bad hop over the shortstop's head. Kinder at the 30. Oh! They're going to say no penalty. Oh, they are going to say penalty. At first, I thought it was no penalty. Didn't see a flag. This official didn't throw it, but the one on the far side threw it. 
I think he's going to tell him that he got blocked into, yeah, Vance. I, I think, think so. they're going to talk about it. I think you're right, Matt. And that, that was Mercy Matson that delivered the punishing blow. And let's see what the uh, final result is. They may wave the flag over. Uh, Derek Griffith might wave the flag over his head, denoting that it's I think no just, penalty. I think we just saw a shot of Roman Aguilar. Was that Roman Aguilar in the crowd? Oh, my goodness. This is a who's who tonight. I think you're right, Matt. I think they, they're going to wave the, wave the flag. Great call, Matt. So do we get that on replay or no? Here you go, Matt. You called it. You saw it. Look at the left side of your screen, everybody. Well, let's see here. Yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of contact between number 41 there for Liberty. He was one of the JV call-ups, so I don't have him on my roster, but he got into Mercy Matson and Matson. Got into Kinder very hard. Rudely introduced himself to him. That's like a salt in the wound right there. Yeah, sure is. Now Moyer still grinding away. Look at that. He, you know, there, there's a player that's not giving up. He was nearly down. Easy thing would just go down, get back up for another play. You're down 35 nothing. He just keeps the engines going, keeps them revved up. Love seeing that, Carson. Watch us. Watch us, Kern County. He is close to going down right here and. You're down 35 nothing. why not just go down? Eh, I'm just gonna go down. Nope, says I'm that's, staying up. That's hitting the weights right there. That's that squat right there. And I, I mean, that's, you saw him with his hand on his back. Moyer, blast through, big contact. Dominic Rutherford and Moyer hit. There's two guys going at it. Well, the Liberty offense, definitely not the same Liberty offense we saw last week. Down 35 nothing here with six minutes left to go in the game. Moyer still playing his heart out. You know, you can bet that he'll be a, at least an all-league selection. Oh, no question. All area. All area. It'd be a crime if he's not. Third and one, leading rusher in the area. Here he comes again. He busts through for one. He wants more. He cuts Moyer. back. A smart runner. Knew where the pressure was coming from. Cut back up. And Cody lifts him up. Says, that a boy. So you've got the regular stalwart still in there for Liberty and uh, John T and Renz, Moyer. Now Moyer comes off the field, though, in favor of Lee Cordova. Coach Golda's got his boys in there, too. He took you out. Feed. Three receiver. Feed. Get your ass out. Carlos got to get away from that guy, man. They're going to square one of the advantages of Carlos Sanguiano being such a great cameraman is he's able to get us awfully closest to the awfully close to those coaches. That's an advantage. First and ten. Rents lobs one up. A lot of contact down the sideline. The officials let it go. That's just a great defensive play right there by Johnson. As you see Graf calling for a penalty there, but he's not gonna get he's not no, gonna get that, that call because that happening. was yeah, Brandon Johnson just Great defensive coverage there. You see Renz throwing up another one of his patented sand wedge Arnold Palmer shots. And you see Matson has positioning there on Graf. There's nothing that Graf can do, and he wants the flag, but he's not going to get it. Second and 10. Jumpy. And the handoff goes to Cordova. And Cordova, no stranger to long runs. And that's going to be another flag for sure. Really bad hit. And here come the flags. Well, you got to be careful here because they're on the Liberty sideline. There's not a lot of room here on the visitor's sideline, so it gets pretty crowded there pretty quick because there's no track that separates the f playing field from the stands. And the fans are all over it. They want a piece of the action. Here's the other thing, guys. you got a playoff game next week possible. Yep. You cannot get into any situation that ends up leading you to an ejection. Well, here's our replay, Brian, and it's a great point as we see Cordova. He is clearly out of bounds here. And I had a feeling this was going to happen, too. You know, you, you saw, I think it was Williams, on, or it was Hannibal on the tackle, and, you know, these. Look, Goal is calling, this is what I like. Now, Goal is calling his guys over to him saying, get over here and settle them down. Look at him. Yeah, there's, there's no need for that. You see all the BHS drillers running on the top left of your screen over to their huddle, and the referee still talking on the Liberty sidelines, and you know, I didn't see what happened after the play. I saw the ensuing chaos. I saw the ensuing uh, crowd, the party that broke out on the Liberty sidelines, but 
There may have been an ejection. There may have been a punch thrown in there, but we'll see what referee Derek Griffith has to say about it. He's, he's on the 36-yard line talking with his side judge. And like Brian said, that would be very unfortunate if they were to lose somebody because of an ejection this late in the game. 35-0 with 4.42 left to go here in the game. And we'll, well see Derek Griffith. If he gives the, uh, if he gives the heave ho here, we'll see. Here's the end of it. You watch that, and I'll call this play. You let me know what the ref does. You can see at the very end, a final player came in there, and I think that was Brandon Johnson. I don't want to give names here, but it looked like it was Brandon Johnson, number 12, who just fired into the player, and he's out of bounds. What they call? No harm, no foul. It was a personal foul on BHS and an unsportsmanlike conduct on Liberty, so no ejections. Thank goodness, because both these teams, you would hate to see that going into the playoffs. 4.42 left here, and I think that Brian said it best. Coach okay. Golder just grabbed his guys and said, fellas, please. Speaking of ejections, Golden Valley has a big game tonight over at Ridgeview. So, what a game. That's for, the, uh, that's for a league title, I believe. Cordova now smells the end zone. Can he get free? He cannot. Gets brought down about the 21-yard line. So Cordova trying to put him on the scoreboard. You know, Matt, you mentioned... Some big football games tonight. Golden Valley, two and one in SYL, six and three overall. How about at Ridgeview, eight and one, three and zero. Oh. North at Garces. The Campbell Campbell Sykes machine continues to roll. Tehachapi, eight and one at Taft. Never ends. It just never ends. Cordoba, 18-yard line, and it may be that Coach Mills and his fellas are thinking, you know, Carson. We know you want to go in there, big fella, but boy, do we need you in the postseason. Yeah, he's chomping at the bit. He's trying to get in, too. They're definitely <laughs> looking towards the future at this point. Down 35 nothing here, just under four minutes left to go. But, yeah, Moyer's going to get his chance, but I don't think it's going to be tonight. Moyer will definitely get his chance either next week. Looks like they're going to be playing next week. I don't see how they'll have a possibly have a bye. Second and six. They're going to go to Cordova. Cordova this time gets drugged down from behind, and... A nice play out there by Rutherford, Donovan that is. But Vance, you know, coming into this game, I was thinking to myself, how smart do these, do the people who realign the leagues look now? A three-way tie for first in the, in the power conference. I mean, these guys look like geniuses now. You know, you have Centennial. They're obviously winning their game. They're gonna be a co-champs with BHS here. And Golden Valley and uh, Ridgeview are in overtime, 33-33. Oh, Golden Valley rebounding for from a couple of hard weeks. So if Golden Valley wins, then they'll be co-champions of that league as well with Ridgeview. If Ridgeview wins, they're outright. Renz, bootleg left, in trouble, takes a big hit, a couple more big hits, swallowed up at the 34-yard line. And uh, boy, that's tough to take this late and this cool of a night. And I think it's about time to get Renz out of there. Oh, that's, go, go ahead, go ahead, Matt. Well, there's no reason to keep Renz in there and you know have him take any more shots like that because one bad shot in the forearm or whatnot puts you out of the game. That's that's something they don't want for next week. Well, you know that that sums up what I was talking about the difference between the discipline on on the BHS driller defense. Last week that was a missed tackle or he gets outside. This week. It's been stuffed. And it and it not just been stuffed, it's been stuffed with authority by this BHS defense. They've been flying to the ball. Fourth and 14. And looks like there may be a timeout called by Coach Gola. Well, one of the fun things we've uh, indoctrinated into our high school football game of the week is one of our sponsors, Crab Radio, has the Crab Crush. And fellas, what have you deemed as the Crab Crush for tonight? Check it out, Kern County, the Crab Crush. That's Matt the with no crab breakfast. Crush hit of the week. <laughs> That's my Brought breakfast at 4 30. 1061 Crab Radio. Who's it gonna be, boys? Tonight's Crab Crush, BHS on defense. Cody Renz takes the snap, hands off up the middle to Carson Moyer. That was big contact. That happened here in the fourth quarter. Dominic the Rutherford. Crush hit of the week. And Dominic Rutherford is the recipient of this week, or Carson Moyer, rather, is the recipient of this week's Crab but Crush. You know what? Every courtesy. time Carson Moyer is in on a Crab Crush, <laughs> he could be administering the crunch as much as he's taking it, you know? Exactly. 
All right, fourth and 14. Fourth and 14. Renz drops up into the pocket, could get the first maybe, maybe, but nope, a nice play from behind. And a nice tackle out there by Kyle Pope keeps him from getting the first down, so now it's gonna be the drillers. And for all intents and purposes, they're just gonna kinda grind this thing out on the ground. And that'll be that. Uh, you see here Renz trying to make something out of nothing. He hasn't had very many open receivers downfield all night, so no reason why he should have one now. And then great defensive pursuit by Pope. Taking Renz down, short of the first down, and it's gonna be a first down going the other way for the drillers. And they're gonna sit on this one. Co-champs, SWIL, minute 57 away. The Drillers and the Golden Hawks. They're gonna go to Wise. Wise barrels his way up for a first down and they're still hitting, it's still going on, no doubt. Now I'd like to get a tally on how many league championships BHS has won over their long and illustrious career. That's gotta be 50, 60 maybe. Well. I'm trying to look at some serious notes during some silliness. Go ahead, Matt, look through here. A buck 20 remaining here in this football game, and now they go on a knee, and I think the pad popping is over. Brian Adams, the driller, the Bruin, your thoughts on a co-championship in this game tonight? Well, you know, uh, Vance, I, 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 I think that, uh, League set up for a, a chance for Liberty tonight to come out and be out, win at the tie break, and it didn't. The Drillers came out tonight and really did what they've done best all year long. That's play great defense and uh, getting to see this in the game. Matt, you're taking this game. Well, BHS just came out. You know, we, we talked about the letdown that Liberty could possibly have, just like the letdown Centennial had after beating BHS, and Liberty definitely didn't come out ready to play tonight, but they've got a week to think about it. Well, that's it. They're announcing it already. Co-champions here. Our director tonight was the godfather, Zachary Flores, and he was aided, as always, by the great crew that we have, Kevin, Mark, the whole crew. I'm going to start forgetting names, but you know who they are. They're household names now. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate everything tonight. Bernie helping out. Samson, Samson Jr., Carlos Sanguiano, Tony Armbrust, my man Brian Adams on the grass. Matt Alvarez next week I won't be with, but the boys will take it. Co-champs, the drillers as they shake hands with the Liberty Patriots. And for those of you that are gonna be up at Bakersfield College tomorrow, get ready for that one. Have a wonderful weekend, good night, God bless. Get in the game. The Friday Night Blitz is on. Friday Football Extra. And it's a complete football package on Sunday night after the NFL. FFX Sunday Night Edition. All the scores, all the highlights, all the stories from the gridiron. Coverage of your favorite school, plus the FFX Game of the Week. Friday Football Extra. FFX, the Sunday Night Edition, only on 17 News after Sunday Night Football. Local football action. Get in the game. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970. With Dan Patrick in the morning. And Jim Rome, 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports. It's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970.
Got a job to do? Premier Equipment Rentals is your answer. Residential or industrial, we've got exactly what you need to get the job done. Whether it's a drill, trencher, bobcat, backhoe, or excavator, you can always count on Premier Equipment Rentals. And with our new extended hours, we're available when you need us. Check us out at 3217 Patton Way and 5001 Stein Road, or give us a call to find out more. Don't forget to ask about our weekend specials. Make your next project a breeze with Premier Equipment Rental. Football season's here and I've been waiting all year. 